In this example video, we're actually going to go over review exercises 10, 8 through 10, 11. And that's looking at what happens when we are doing construction and we do some borrowing um, on a loan to in order to pay for that construction that we have. So in review exercise 10, 8, it tells us that Dexter Construction Company is building a student condominium complex. It started construction on January 1st, year one, and they borrowed $2.5 million on January 1st specifically for the project by issuing a 10% five-year $2.5 million note. And that is payable on December 31st of year three. They also had a 12% five-year $3 million note payable and a 10% 10-year $1.8 million note payable outstanding all year. So those two other notes were not specific for this student condo complex. The first one is. So they want us to calculate the weighted average interest rate on the non-construction specific debt for year one. So we're looking at the one that is not specific for this one particular project. So we're looking at the $3 million note and the $1.8 million note. So we have 3 million and we had 1.8. The $3 million note had a 12% interest rate the 1.8 million had 10%. So we're simply gonna multiply across to get how much in total interest the company would in technically incur. So $540,000 in interest on a total of $4.8 million in terms of total loan outstanding. So weighted average interest rate, we take the total interest accumulated on those two non-construction specific loans, and we divide it by the total amount that was borrowed. So that means we have an 11.25% interest rate on non-construction specific loans that have been outstanding for the entire year. Remember, your interest rates are always annual interest rates that we have. So we're gonna utilize that information as we go through the next few review exercises. So in review exercise 10.9, it says referring to that information in 10.8, they have incurred the following costs. So $300,000 as of January 1st that they needed, then they borrowed, took out another $600,000 on those notes, then they dipped into those notes again and pulled out another million dollars on June 30th, and then finally, they took out more money out of those notes of 480000 So they want us to calculate what we call their weighted average accumulated expenditures. So on January 1st, they took out a total of $300,000. So that means if they took it out on the 1st, by the end of the year, they've had that money outstanding for 12 months of the year, so 12 out of 12. So that means our weighted average expenditures for that money is at $300,000. They then borrowed more money out of those loans on March 1st and they took out $600,000. So they have it from March 1st all the way to December 31st. So that means we've had that money outstanding that we'd be paying interest on of 10 months out of the 12 months out of the year for a total of $500,000. We go back and on June 30th, they take out $1 million out of those notes and notice that it's June 30th. So pay very close attention to the dates. Is it the first, which means that entire month is included or is it the 30th, which means that in this case, June is not included at all. So that means that this $1 million have been outstanding for six months out of the 12 months for a total of another $500,000. And then finally, on November 1st, they need another $480,000. And again, it's November 1st, so that means we had it all of November and all of December. So two months out of those 12 months for a total of 80,000 in terms of weighted average expenditures. So in total, 
their weighted average expenditures are 1,380,000, even though their actual expenditures are $2,380,000. So now utilizing this information, we go to review exercise 1010. So it says using the information in 10.8 and 10.9, they want us to calculate Dexter's capitalized interest on the student condominium complex for year one. So what they're talking about here, capitalized interest, capitalized means that you can add it to the value of that asset. So while we are constructing this condominium complex, all of the interest charges that we have accumulated can actually be added into the value of that asset at the end when it's finally completed. So we go back to this information here. So they tell us that we had, if we go back to the original information here, we had borrowed a $2.5 million loan that was specifically for this project, and it was a 10% five-year loan. So if we go back to our weighted average expenditures here, our weighted average expenditures of $1,380,000 is less than the um, construction specific loan that we borrowed of $2.5 million. So that means to get our capitalized interest here, we're simply going to take the weighted average of 1,380,000 and multiply it by the 10% interest for that construction specific loan that we have. Again, we can do that because our, our weighted average accumulated expenditures are less than the total amount borrowed on that loan of $2.5 million. So capitalized interest then, so far for year one, is at $138,000. So again, utilizing this information, we look at review exercise 1011, and they changed some of the information here. So it says, using the information from above, assume that instead they borrowed a $1 million um, specific for that project. So instead of the $2.5 million, they're only borrowing $1 million specifically for that condominium complex. And then everything else then would have to be covered by those other notes that we had taken out. So when that happens, my million dollar construction specific loan is less than my weighted average accumulated expenditures. So I have to break that apart. So we have a million dollars that's going to be covered by that construction specific loan that has interest of 10%, which means there's 380,000 in weighted average expenditures that could not be covered by that construction specific loan. So when that happens, we go all the way back here and we utilize that weighted average interest rate for the other two loans that we have. And we multiply that by 11.25%. So we do our math across. And that means in total in this scenario, we are able to capitalize $142,750 in interest in year one.